these are scenes being replicated all over the world. Over 18 million farmers, most of them small-scale growers, are benefiting from planting biotech crops, crops that increase yields and income and have been tested to be safe to humans and the environment. I think uh, agricultural biotechnology, food biotechnology offers so much promise for food safety, for food security around the world, uh, and for nutrition. But while more than 18 million farmers cannot be wrong, what is stopping other farmers from adopting the technology? In many African states, it is political. Though many of our scientists are doing a lot of research in banana, in maize, in uh, sweet potato, cassava, our products cannot be commercialized without a law. Until now, we don't have the, the law uh, approved from the parliament. The law is in front of the prime minister to sign it by the two minister of agriculture and minister of environment. And once the parliament is established, I think it will be approved through the parliament. In Zimbabwe, we've got uh, the law in place uh, we have got the infrastructure in place, but what's limiting us to start adopting the technology is the political will. Yes, we need the political will, we need the political support, and we need the policymakers to really be aware of the full potential of uh, GMO and other biotechnologies in increasing food production and dealing with the uh, problems of uh, chronic malnutrition in Kenya. You have to put science, data, available and uh, have a, a good way to inform, you know, the regulators and uh, the policymakers in order uh, they can feel comfortable on their decisions. Public acceptance of the technology is also a major challenge in developing countries. The current challenge that we are facing uh, in Tanzania is that uh, uh, we are promoting uh, the technology without the product. Most people may be uh, don't aware about uh, the product so we have to bring the better and true information about biotechnology. I think the farmer is uh, accepted the biotechnology it's no problem it mainly is the consumer. One of the biggest challenge in my view is that the general public does not have a, 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 best, a good understanding of, of biotechnology despite the government having put in programs such as the public understanding of, of biotechnology. It's very critical to have a proper uh, public education and communicate about the technology in the more popular people language. Aggravating public perception challenges is the presence of technology critics that is undermining efforts to fast-track biotech crop adoption. There's still some suspicion um, of um, uh, of GM, but the but it's it's changed to where it was 10 or 20 years ago. In those days, the NGOs who are opposed to uh, GM research and GM cultivation were dominating the debate. But they have made so many claims now, which have turned out to be unfounded, to not be based in evidence. Um, that scientists have called them out on, that it's become increasingly clear to journalists who is a reliable and trustworthy source um, and who is serving their own agenda. These uh, groups actually, uh, they are against the technology. They are in touch with MPs, they are in touch with farmers, discouraging the promotion of this technology. However, what we do, we try to engage them in factual debates in many of our forums. We welcome them to a round table and discuss with them the facts and the benefits that we could accrue from embracing modern biotechnology. Yes, a uh, question of scientists. Scientists, they use their traditional means of communication. Yeah, there are very few who are here eager and willing to engage with the public. They're not shy, but it's like taking a position and from the traditional way that you do science, you communicate through journals and your colleague, then it's done. But what, you can, what we normally tell them, and what I continue to insist, that the world is changing, we really need to market our product, we do science, but also has to make a difference to human and the society in general. What I would recommend to the public is that 
yes while they may not be able to avoid hearing what the people against the technology are saying they need to do more research they should not just take what they hear from them but make an effort to do more research come and talk to the scientists to find out exactly what is happening because the scientists are doing the work the scientists have the products and this may help them even to believe more because they'll be seeing rather than just hearing and still other challenges continue to be addressed we need to to, to choose the right words to uh, explain what's been, what's uh, what is biotechnology and sometimes they have uh, some question coming out about uh, safety there are people who associate biotechnology with certain health and environmental risks. And because of the concerns of such people, we need to ask, ask ourselves one fundamental question. Do the benefits of biotechnology or GMO technology far outweigh the risks? And if the answer is yes, that the benefits far outweigh the risks, then the point is that we should find ways and means of taking advantage of the benefits of uh, biotechnology and GMO uh, technology and at the same time find ways and means of dealing with the issues of safety. Despite the challenges, experts believe that they can be surmounted through the collective efforts of stakeholders. What I need to understand first and foremost is that it's one tool in a much bigger toolbox of plant breeding and science and technology that has been developed over many decades uh, so far and has a safety track record of uh, more than 20 years safety tracker record in terms of environmental safety as well as human and animal health. The, the sort of the days of, of myths and scaremongering I think are receding into the past. Um, the scientific community is better organized than it has been before and better able to communicate with the media and I think farmers are also better organized in terms of demanding to have the choice and ultimately this is what it comes down to. It comes down to consumers being able to make informed decisions about what to eat and farmers being able to make informed decisions about what to grow. Um, and I think we should be able to find some common ground. Every farmer is looking for an opportunity to better their farming practices so that you can bring better products to the market, feed your family. Of course, that's the primary objective of every farmer in Africa, to first feed their families and then take supplies to the market. And so, if the technologies are well communicated, in terms of what it is that it brings to the farmer, the farmers have no problem embracing the technologies.